What's up everybody? It's Tom Sister Best coming at you with another video. In this video we're going to talk about AMC's opposition to Tuttle and Mr. Icono. Okay? And before I get started I need to point out that I had put the links to the petition in the my description. Something happened with that link. Somebody sent me a new link that sends you straight to the petition. As you can see, it's listed number one in the description. Link to petition to opt out of Allegheny Civil Suit. You should do that. It'll take you to this page. Read it. Since we started talking about it, it's went up from 300. We went up 900 people signed this. People, we need to sign this. Let's get over there and do it. Secondly, follow the court case here. All right. This is the link that takes you to the page with the letters all right and this is where all the letters that are coming in my letters your letters the judges letters the lawyers letters everything pertaining to the case is in that link I just showed you it brings you here well you'll see we had a lot of activity happen today yesterday we talked it was 414 was the last day and now we see that Jason sent in a letter Jordan sent in a letter, Christina sent in a letter, Joe sent in a letter. Great job, everybody. Okay, right here, 417, opposition to Frank Icano's motion for re-argument with certificate of service. All right, number second one right here. Plaintiff's opposition to proposed intervener Brian Tuttle's motion to intervene with certificate of service. All right, and if you click on that letter, it brings you right here. And this is AMC's opposition to Mr. Tuttle, okay? And we come on down, like, number one. I'm going to have to break this up into parts, too, people, because I'm going to have to take breaks. It's kind of long. But I love the way number one opens up, all right? On April 3rd, 2023, plaintiff announced that they had reached terms to settle the claims at issue in this action. Should the settlement be approved, among other things, AMC Entertainment? Holding common stock and AMC preferred equity units will each undergo a 10 to 1 reverse stock split and thereafter 8. Y'all know the routine. Point here is they say for every 7.5 shares, you get one share of AMC. Or if you have 75 shares of AMC, you will get 10 new AMC. All right. They specifically laid out. The terms of the settlement right here in paragraph number one, people. That's why I love this. Because they're going to question it and say, well, Tuttle doesn't even know what the settlement is. We haven't even brought forth the settlement uh, to the court yet. And he's objecting to it. And he don't even know. You tell us exactly what it is in paragraph number one, dickheads. But anyway, let's look at number two is what I'm talking about. Mr. Tuttle's motion is a de facto objection to a yet-to-be-filed proposed settlement. If Mr. Tuttle is a prospective class member, he will be provided notice of the settlement pursuant to Delaware Court of Chancery Rule 23, and if he takes issue with the settlement terms, have due opportunity to object. Now, here's where it gets kind of funny. It's what I'm laughing about. Part one is we haven't even filed this yet, Your Honor, and he's objecting. Well, you've let the uh, stipulations of the settlement out, it's in paragraph number one that this is exactly what the settlement is. And he's objected and says he does not want any part of this. So where have you proved your case in part number two? Part number three, he says, in his motion, Mr. Tuttle sets forth no legal basis for his intervention. All right? And that's not exactly 100% true. Mr. Tuttle brought forth an accusation against the attorney that's with Allegheny right now in that he got suspicion of taking hush money and everything in the same case that he had in Highcroft just a couple months back. So I think that there would be legal basis there if you're questioning the authenticity of the lawyer that's representing you. Just saying. And number four is really good, people. Policy considerations likewise favor denial of motion. Intervention here 
would open the floodgates to AMC retail stockholders, of which there are likely tens of thousands, if not more, prematurely presenting their opinions on the merits of an action and how it should be litigated after appointment of lead plaintiffs and lead counsel, but before the settlement approval proceedings. All right, let's talk about that. First off, I want you to see how many retail stockholders, of which there are how many? Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. How does it go from possibly four million to tens of thousands? if not more, all right? There's a big leap between tens of thousands and four million. So now how did, why did they put in the court documents here there's likely tens of thousands of retail stockholders, all right? And that we will be prematurely, which is what Chance DeLore was talking about, presenting an opinion on the merits of the settlement before it was brought forth to the court. That if you have an objection, to the settlement, you wait until the settlement has been presented to the court and objections are being taken, and then you can object to that. Our letters, again, are not concerning the settlement, so don't worry about that. But I'm just curious why AMC would put in there that there's tens of thousands of shareholders instead of millions, all right? And then they said that... Uh, there's already been lead plaintiffs and lead counsels appointed in the case, so we're taken care of. There's no reason for Mr. Tuttle to get involved. See, that's where their argument here is in number eight. Mr. Tuttle's interests as a common stockholder are presently adequately represented by the plaintiffs, and he's told them that's bullshit. He's hired, what was that lawyer's name again? There it is. Michael Berry to represent him in the case against Highcroft, and he took a $250,000 hush payment and closed the case out, and uh, Mr. Tuttle got nothing. And now, let's talk about this. I was seeing a comment that said, when I was watching Tony DiNaro's stream, one of his people put a comment in the chat that said Mr. Tuttle's just a sue-happy individual. No, I meant to say this the other night, too, about Mr. Tuttle. He is a man that's not going to let Wall Street push him around. And when something came up in his investment with Highcroft, he sued them. And now something's come up with AMC, and he is suing them. All right? And he's asked to represent himself pro se, and I agree that he should be able to. And when the settlement is finally proposed to the court, he would be able to argue against it. So... That's where I stand. That's where Mr. Tuttle stands. It's a nine-page document. A bunch of the rest of it's all legalese where they're trying to justify why Mr. Tuttle shouldn't be able to open his mouth. I love the fact that they said that in, if, if they, the judge approves this, then a tidal wave of retail investors will want to start piling in and, and representing themselves. Well, we don't trust those lawyers either. But we trust Mr. Tuttle and Mr. Icona being in the courtroom. So with that, love y'all. Be blessed. I've already seen uh, Mr. Donahue saying that we're waiting and he's being in touch to find out when the date's going to be. And he's going to that. We'll see what else goes on. Love you. Be blessed. And I'll see you in the next video.